Hello everyone and welcome back. This video is going to be primarily based around getting the most out of your Smart Race app. For those that have been using it for a while, I'm sure you're quite familiar with all of its features. For those that are new to the hobby and are unsure about whether you should get this app, hopefully this video will give you enough information to make that decision. And for those that have been using it for a while, I hope that maybe I can show you a couple of things that I've discovered in the past couple of days here. The content of this video will kind of include the step-by-step, -step, what needs to be done in order to get your track inputted, all your cars, information on how to get your qualifying, your practice, and your race widgets set up. And then lastly, there is an extra widget that I think a lot of people may be underusing that's actually quite interesting, and I would really like to showcase how you can do that for yourselves. So without further ado, Let's get into it and let's learn a thing or two about Smart Race. Okay, so before we get started, obviously you need to download the app. Uh, my iPad has the app already, so I'm just trying to showcase how to find it fresh on your device. So if you look up Smart Race, so once you search for Smart Race, you'll see that it has a initial charge of $15. This is Canadian. Just get you started. You'll get the app and all its basic features. Okay, so once you have the app downloaded, you'll see a icon that just says Smart Race. So we'll select that. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to create a new track. So go to where it says manage and tracks. And you'll see that my speedway, Sunshine Speedway, is already programmed into the track setup. We're going to add a new one just for the sake of training. And we're going to call this test track. And the short name, max three characters, we'll call it PT1. And if you want, you can select a photo from your library. We'll select this funny image that I found. And if you know the length of your track in centimeters, um, for those that have done your track layout on some sort of track programming software, you'll know that value probably in centimeters or millimeters. We're just gonna make it 2000 centimeters for a 20 meter track. We'll get to these bottom items SVG thing at a later time. We're just doing the basic setup here. So we're going to hit save and you're going to see that now there's a new track, test track, 2000 centimeter length. Let's go back. Now to get things started, you should complete as many things as you can in this manage portion. So we're going to focus on cars. So as you can see here, the list of cars that I've got in my library is already programmed. For the sake of this, we're going to program a new car. So the car that we're going to add is this NSR McLaren 720S test car. As you can see, it doesn't have a car number on it, but we're going to program it as car 00. So to get started here, before we add another car to our library, we need to create some category tags. This allows you to group your cars by their manufacturer specification. You have your group C, you have F1, you have GT3, Can-Am, group 5, etc. So go to the bottom right hand corner where it says manage category tags. You'll see here that I already have quite a few of them developed. Um, if you click on the add, it allows you to just type in a name. So for here we're just going to do test and this test group will be specific to this test car that I'm adding. So I type in the name, hit save. You'll see on the bottom there it says test group, and we're going to close. And go back to cars, and now we want to add this new car, so we're going to go to the bottom left where it says add. Let's type in the name, category tags on the far right there. You see test group, so we're going to select that. And with the image, we are going to choose the one that we just took a moment ago. Now, looking at the bottom section here, we've got manufacturer. We're going to select NSR. With the scale, it's 132nd scale. The color, this is important. If you select a color that's 
within the color scheme of the car. This will actually play into how the cars are shown on your, your race widgets. So I'm going to select white to make it really obvious. With the make, this is just the make of the car itself, not the brand of the toy car. So we're going to scroll down to McLaren decoder. This is a analog car, so we're going to disable the decoder. Tires on this thing are Paul Gage. The magnet has been removed. This is an analog car with the sounds. This is just a sound that it uh, the race software will play as it's crossing the finish line so I don't really enjoy the sounds especially when you have quite a few cars on track it just ends up being a lot of background noise that doesn't really help the situation so I like to keep that off with driven laps if you've driven this car before you've um, input it into your system and you know you've driven it a lot of laps you can put this value in here. Ultimately, I don't see the importance of the driven laps. Well, the one thing I think is important is the maintenance interval. So with my cars, I like to put a 500 lap maintenance interval. It just gives you a warning um, with the cars you own to address them with some TLC after you've driven them that interval. So once all these fields are completed, you can hit save and then you'll see in the top left corner that we have our NSR Claren 720S test car ready to go on track. Now, should you want to make changes to any of your car data, you can go to the bottom right hand corner where that little pencil is and you can make changes to any of these fields. Just make sure when you make a change that you hit save and that you don't click on the top right corner X because your changes will not be saved. Okay, so now that you've created a track and you have your library of cars implemented into your car list, you need to create some drivers. With this library I have here, I have a couple of people already pre-programmed. I am going to add, bottom left corner, a new driver. I'm going to call this guy Master Chief. And we're going to call him 117 because he is Spartan 117 and his spoken name is going to be John 117 and we're going to select a photo from the library there's this handsome devil right there once you have all your drivers added so before we get started with setting up our practice qualifying and race screens we're going to go to controller colors under the configure and you'll see here that I have my controller colors configured from 1 through 8 as you can see on my track layout here my controller colors are from left to right red blue yellow black orange and white and that coincides with the color coding that i have set up on the screen if you want to change the colors you just simply tap on it make your adjustments to whatever color you want it to be and then tap away from the screen and it'll save that color however once you start racing you're going to find that these controller colors are going to change Oddly enough, the coloring that you pre-select on these numbers isn't going to really matter if you are applying color codes to your cars. So based on my car list here, you can see that I have this, this number 7 Aston Martin Vantage. You can see in the edit screen, I've given it an Aston Martin green color. If you select those cars in the race screen for these individuals, so let's go with, if we select controller 1, Choose Batman, and we're going to pick a car that is not red as per controller one. We're going to pick number eight fly slot Lola. It is blue, so when we hit save, the controller color turns to blue. So ultimately, this screen here, these color numbers do not necessarily matter if you are applying color values to the cars that you are programming into your car list. In my opinion, I think giving the cars the color coding is better as it makes it easier to identify on your race screen who is in the lead based upon the car color, not necessarily the controller color. But that's up to you to decide. Lastly, we're going to go into the settings that you see underneath the configure tab. Under this tab, there's quite a few options for us to adjust. 
with the appearance. Obviously you can change the language with the background style. This is just an image that changes in your race screen. Um, not a critical one for operation of the software itself. You can also select your own custom background if you want to implement an image of your track. The important ones here are the subsequent tabs here. So let's go to the race screen. Now there's quite a few settings here. Lap counting, it can either count forward as beginning in zero or backwards beginning at whatever race lap you are running. Display an indicator when crossing the line. In my opinion, there's quite a bit going on depending on how many cars you have. So the least amount of information for the shortest period of time is best. So selecting one second is always a good option. If you do have sector track pieces built into your track, this selection is a must. For those that have longer tracks, I would highly recommend looking into these components as they do add a very interesting dynamic to the race screen. So right now I have one sector timing piece in my track, so I leave this in the always position. Items such as this display average lap speed, I don't find that information particularly interesting. With the timetable sorting, to my understanding, this allows you to maintain the controller number in a fixed one through six order on the race screen and the dynamic puts the top driver at the top. Doesn't matter what their controller number is, you're gonna have your top driver always at the top and then sub subsequent following cars below it. With the driver to car or driver image, if you want your car number one through six to, to be shown on your race screen or the logo, the image photograph of whoever your, your drivers are, this allows you to select that option. You can even choose the car logo if you have numerous brands on track. You can focus on implement the car logo, your Porsche, Lamborghini, what, what have you. And then these last options are simply just an on-off. Okay, so now that we have all those items set up, let's go to new free practice and we'll get the widgets set up for this type of race. As you can see here, the screen is very basic. The top band doesn't have any major info other than it tells you it's in free practice. And then it gives you basic information like timing, status, laps, and best lap. And then the widget below that is going to start displaying times as cars are passing through the start finish gate. To get the session going in the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see the start icon. As you can see, while this session is in the disabled mode in the bottom middle you can see the three yellow lights this is just showing that the track is disabled and the cars will not be allowed to drive no matter the input on the controller so pushing the start button you can see the five lights are shown on the screen as well as on the start finish gate and now cars are free to run on track so now that you can see there's two cars running on track we've got two drivers that have the same we're going to learn how to fix that but for starters we're just going to view the information that we see here as you can see the dark blue batman has a purple sectored number one this means that that driver has run the fastest time for that sector so he has a 9.483 and the other batman has a 10.459 on the other hand, Batman 2, or the light blue Batman, has a faster sector 2 at a 9.132 compared to a 9.139. Now I will note that the number on the right of the sector times is always the fastest sector time and the number on the left is always the last sector time. So if you're running laps and you see the left number change, but the right number stays the same, that means your sector times are not improving. Now with this limited information, it's time to start adding some more widgets. So go to the bottom left-hand corner. You'll see there's a little icon that looks like three squares on top of one another. Select that, and we're going to add a new widget. And if you click on the three white dots and select configure, there's a little drop down menu under type that gives you some options here. And the first one we're going to pick is one called assignments. 
after you select the type you need to choose the size it will show up on your screen now this is a pretty major widget so I would make this one a 100% sized widget so after you select it you'll see there's a thin band with six controller numbers that have a name and a car associated with them if you don't have a car or name assigned you will see it says unassigned now one thing I would suggest widgets that are meant to race of the widget page so going back to the three squares in the bottom left you can select move widgets and this will allow you to jog these around on screen so let's move the assignment widget to the very top and press the save widget positions in the bottom left hand corner now you can see that that widget is at the top of the screen now to fix the problem of us having two Batmans on track, we're going to tap the assignment widget and this allows us to select a controller. So I'm going to select controller number one and I'm going to assign the driver to that controller as master chief and I'm going to leave the car that he's driving the same. So after tapping away from the screen, you can see now we have Batman versus the master chief. And as the race is running, you can see that they are essentially swapping fastest overall times and fastest sectors. So after a few laps of RAN, we need to add another widget. So again, we're gonna go to the bottom left, add new widget, and we're gonna pick one that's called Quick links. Now with quick links, there's quite a few icons that you can select or deselect. Now for myself, I like to choose the following quick links and we'll get into what some of them do here momentarily. And because this is a fairly major widget, we're going to make it a 100% size widget. So after you save it, you'll see that it goes to the bottom of the widget page. Because this is a race preparation widget, I like to move this one to the top again. So go down to your move widgets, jog that one to the top, and save. So now you can see we have our quick links followed by our assignment and then the standard free practice information session info below it. Now one of the nice things about the quick links widget is the tune function. If you go to the tune function, you can see we've got Master Chief at the top is car one, Batman is car two. And right now, Master Chief's car has 100% throttle available to his car compared to Batman's 54%. Changing the slider bar is essentially the same as changing the speed on the CU without the race software. As you can see here, the brake force and the fuel tank size are also selectable items. These operate the same way as the CU on its own. Now the last widget I'm going to add here under our free practice session is this one called Positions. This widget is good for folks who are running races without a race director, someone who can relay critical information on the primary widget, the sector times, etc. This position widget just simply puts a running order of the cars that are on track and it just shows the car that is in the lead on the far left and trailing cars after that on the right with the basic time as to how far that car is trailing. So you can see here that car 2, which is Master Chief, is trailing by 2.1 seconds on the best lap time. So back at the main menu here, you can see there is a new qualifying icon. We're going to select that and it gives you the option to start a new session and you can choose a qualifying duration time. So if you're running cars one at a time to give drivers the open track to themselves, I would maybe select a time frame that's a bit longer. If you wish to give each driver 
two minutes and you have six drivers, I would do a 12 minute session. If you're sending all cars on track at the same time, maybe choose a, a shorter duration. So for myself here, I'm going to select a five minute qualifying session. Now you can see here that the standardized qualifying session has the same basic information as the free practice. It has the widget that shows the individual car data once the cars start rolling over the finish line, and that's it. So before the session gets started here, we're going to add the same widgets that we had used previously, starting with assignment, and we'll make it 100%, and we're gonna move it to the top. And then we're gonna add the quick links and select all the necessary quick links that will make the session easy to manage, and we're gonna make it 100% width as well. And we're gonna jog it to the very top, similar to the free prep. And lastly, we're gonna add a widget called remaining time, and we're gonna make it 100%, and move it just above the critical data. Okay, so we have our qualifying session underway now. And you can see as time ticks down, the cars are turning laps below. And you can see the sector information that we've discussed previously between the two drivers. You can see how many laps they've turned, the best times for each of those cars, and the interval time between best and second best car. Now, if you wanna add additional widgets, we could add the positions one that we had previously just to give drivers a quick, quick peek to see what their overall lap times are lagging. So instead of going to the main menu to start a race, we can use the quick links widget to start the race. Now, once you press the race start icon, it'll ask you a couple of questions here. So under the general tabs, you can say, I wanna run a laps count race or a time race choose how many ghost cars are in the pack now the ghost car number is critical that's because the CU sees all the ghost cars as car number seven so if you have three ghost cars on track it's going to count three laps for every time the cars go over the start finish straight so you're going to find that car seven is going to outlap you if you do not change this value Ultimately, you want to make sure that the ghost cars are not outpacing you. Otherwise, you're going to lose every race to a ghost car. Okay, so currently you see that I have this race widget page already developed. At the very top, I have the assignment. Second widget below that is the quick links. The standard information is below that positions interval is just below the standard information. I also have driven laps on the bottom left, remaining laps in the middle, and for a little bit of fun I have the session record on the bottom right. Basically whoever holds the current race record for lap will show up in this icon. So we begin the race. You can press the start button in your quick links or the tiny little start button in the bottom right hand corner. Once the cars start turning laps, you're going to see sector time start to develop, as well as overall lap and lap counts. The driven laps widget starts to increase while the remaining laps decreases. And you can see here, as of right now, Batman has the current session record of 16.679, which is highlighted in purple here. Now the widget that I'm really excited to show you guys is this one here. This is a best sector indicator. Now, for those that have watched Formula One or any other type of racing, sometimes you'll see them show a diagram that indicates which driver has the best sector time in a certain area of the track. Now, you'll find that this particular diagram looks an awful lot like my track. I'm going to show you how to build this for yourselves, but first I'm going to show you how it works. As you can see here, the sector that begins on the left-hand side and approaches the right-hand side is light blue, as well as the sector that's on the right-hand side is green. This indicates that Batman holds the sector record for both Sector 1 and Sector 2. I'm Batman. 
Now as I increase the speed of the Master Chief's car, you'll see that his car is now taken ownership of both the Sector 1 and Sector 2 best times, and it changes the color of the sector time. This widget definitely adds some dynamic to your race session. Because it is so large on screen, it's easy for the drivers to glance up and to see who has the session record for those sectors. Now, I'm going to show you how to develop this sector diagram for yourselves. I will provide the link to this website that was provided to me by the folks at Smart Race. Unfortunately, it's all in German, but with a little bit of help, I can show you what the icons do so you don't have to translate it for yourself. There are two red text boxes in the light blue rectangle here. The left text box is to delete the last part, and the right text box is to delete all parts. So one of the rules of starting this SVG planner is to always start with a CU or checklist. So we're going to start with that. And once you select it, you'll see there is a gray rectangle in the view frame here. And below that is essentially a standard straight. When you add it, you'll see that the length of the gray box extends. And if you press the left on, it removes that standard straight. If you add a number of standard straights, you click the right icon, it deletes them all. So getting started again, we're going to use a CU. And you can see to the right of that, there are curves. I like to remember that curves links is just curves left. Curves rights, if you want to call it that, is just a curve to the right. And you can see below that there are 160s, 130s, 230s, 330s, and 415s. It's pretty self-explanatory for those that have used online track planning software. I found the best way to get this track planning SVG file completed was to just bring my tablet out to my track and look at each individual piece and build it as I saw. So let's build a three sector timing track that does not reflect time and we'll show you how to implement it into the software. So beginning with the CU or standard straights, we have a couple of 160 curves to the right followed by standard straight and a sector time. From there I'm going to add some more standard straights, some left hand 160s, followed by some right hand 160s and another sector time. So we have sector 1 and sector 2 completed. We are going to close this circuit to finalize our sector 3. So that should be good enough there. Now the tricky thing with using this planning site on an iPad, at this time I'm not aware of how to take this SVG file and convert it to a text file. If you've built this SVG file on an iPad, you may have to email it to a PC based computer that has Notepad on it. Otherwise, if you've built the SVG file on a computer, you can open up Notepad, and when you go to the open, make sure you change the setting at the bottom to all files instead of just text files. This will allow you to open up the SVG file to view the SVG coding. You see here that there's fairly minimal text involved with this coding. So what you gotta do from here is select all and copy and paste this into an email that you can send back to yourself. So once you've recovered the SVG file, select your track and go to the edit icon, which is the pencil and scroll all the way down to the SVG data. And you're going to paste the text that you retrieved from your email into the SVG data comment section. And you're going to press save before you close. 
I want to go back to a race session and scroll down, you'll see that your sector widget is programmed to look like the one that we just developed. Now there are plenty more features that I haven't touched base on, primarily the use of Smart Race with analog cars using a secondary visual monitoring device as shown here. An explanation of how that system works will be made in a separate video. All in all, the race screens are your own. Use whatever widgets make sense to you and whatever widgets your crew likes to use. I would say the placement of the TV plays a big role on whether or not racers will actually be able to look at the race screen while they're racing. The setup that I have has the TV quite high, so it is a little bit awkward to take your eyes off the track to glance at some information. Perhaps some point down the road I will put the TV in a more driver-friendly spot so that it's easier to glance at the information as you're driving. A larger TV might help as well. So I hope you found this video somewhat useful in setting up your race widgets. If you guys have any other um, ideas on how you guys prefer to run your race sessions, other widgets that you like to include, by all means, send me a message. Um, comments are always welcome. I really enjoy answering people's questions and hearing from other people's ideas. If there are other tips and tricks that you guys have regarding the software, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoyed this. We'll see you on the next video, which will hopefully be another top slot. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Until next time, see you later.